so last class uh, we had seen how to make a proper puncture based on anatomy preparation of the site the sheets used and the special situation the, like that of a ch- in case of children so this time we will be looking into the complications of a puncture even after uh, having a, after a femoral puncture what are the complications how to treat them and what are the advantages and disadvantages of a femoral puncture so after doing a, a femoral puncture so uh, when we plan for a femoral puncture especially in case of endovascular procedure or a simple dsa it's always better to uh, see for the conditions where the patient is suitable for a femoral puncture or whether he is not so prevention is better than cure that uh, than going for complications so how, what where, where, which are the conditions where we need and go for a femoral puncture and can go for other methods so if there is an absent or weak femoral pulse consider radial artery puncture or if the, the pulse is weak better go for a smart needle that is ultrasound guided puncture uh in case of a weak pulse and also as we have seen in the last class in ileo femoral bypass grafts better go for a radial puncture and if there is a prior arterial access femoral arterial access and a closure device being used previously then uh, like an angio seal wait for 3 months before reaccess and if we it's necessary that we have to go for an access we can do one thing that is go 1 cm proximal to the prior access site and uh, if the prior femoral arterial access site complications are there then better to go for a contralateral femoral site or uh, uh, go for a radial access also that is the same in case of prior surgery and in case of tortuous iliofemoral arterial system go for better for a radial access or either uh, we can go for a long sheet once the arterial access is obtained and calcified common femoral artery go for a small needle uh, it is better likely to penetrate or go for a femoral artery opposite side if it is not calcified and in case of non aneurysms of the system iliofemoral and aortoiliac system better to go for radial approach and while exchanging the wires in case of procedures uh, use exchanging length wires in uh, while you doing the endovascular procedures and uh, if the patient is uh, having a severe back pain inability to lie flat for prolonged periods of time the patient may lie on the dsa table or the procedure table for one or two hours but we have to keep him or her uh, immobilized for uh, right lower limb immobilization has to be done for up to 6 to 12 hours so in that case better we go for a radial approach if possible and if there is a need go for a closure device in such patients and mor- morbidly obese patients consider radial approach or use of micropuncture or smart smart needle use so basically that that way we can prevent any complications uh, multiple punctures uh, complications to occur in case of a in these conditions and if it occurs the complications can be broadly divided into vascular and non vascular the vascular ones basically the most common one is the hematoma followed by pseudo aneurysm av fistula dissection of the vessel retroperitoneal hemorrhage thrombus leading to occlusion the non vascular most commonly is the infections which occurs but these are now obsolete because of good clinical uh, practice of uh, sepsis asepsis being done in our cath labs nowadays and f- uh, femoral access complications le- the rate always uh, is into a tune of uh, during a dsa is to to a tune of less than 1 percentage and in interventional coronary procedures we have uh, the data uh, hematoma could be common uh, that is about 5 to 20 percentage and what what can, how can we predict these vascular complications can we predict prior to the patient coming in uh, to us uh, or coming into the cath lab yes uh, some uh, non modifiable factors like increased age female gender the extremes of the body mass that is low and high are more prone to have vascular complications and as we know the use of anticoagulation also adds to it and procedural characteristics like complexity of the procedure time for sheath removal which we have discussed and stent placement etc uh, that is the type of procedure can also lead to complications and ckd hypertension uh, heart failure etc are also predictors that the patient may land in complications especially vascular complications during a femoral puncture so in short risk factors can be modifiable that is site of puncture number of attempts which we can, uh, if a single attempt is the best multiple attempts leads to complications and the size of the sheath smaller the better and sheath removal 
the time ideal is minimum of 30 uh, minutes and we know that it is based on the number of french we have last class told that it's a, one french at least five minutes so five french means at least 25 minutes and the medications that is the anticoagulant and antithrombotic agents which we use and uh, non-modifiable definitely elderly age female gender bmi as we uh, told earlier and hypertension and ckd so last class we had to uh, discuss regarding the puncture the site of puncture the ideal target site puncture that is one centimeter lateral to the medial border of the femoral head and in between that region if it is a high stick puncture that is puncturing uh, above the uh, uh, target area then there is a chance of retroperitoneal hemorrhage and low stick because there is increased overlap of the veins over the arteries there is increased chance of av fistula then a chance of hematoma formation, pseudoaneurysm, etc. Posterior wall puncture, puncture through the back of the artery, also wall, back wall of the artery can also lead to retroperitoneal hemorrhage. So ideal attempt is one and better not to go for more than two attempts. If the, such a condition arises, we have to shift to the other side or go for other side like a radial approach. And greater the size, more the chances of complications. And always sheath removal give the ideal time and the ideal time for compression and uh, medications also we have to modify like uh, if there is a chance of there is a chance of complications either a bleed hematoma or if there is a chance of thrombosis modify the antiplatelets and iv anticoagulants according to it based on the primary condition which the patient had came for and the most common one as we know is hematoma that is a collection of blood in the soft tissue which accounts to at least 20 percentage and patient presence with pain, swelling and induration as in case of any other hematoma. So in this picture, we can see the, uh, there is perforation and the formation of hematoma. It could be there, there could be abnormal connections between the uh, vein and the artery that is AV fistula and also the pseudo aneurysm we see. So hematoma, when does it become serious? When the distal pulses are diminished, that is there is critical limb ischemia. And hematoma is greater in size more than 5 cm. And the area around the axis site becomes firm, unable to control or manage the bleed which occurs. And there is a fall in the hemoglobin level of the patient. And also that the physical appearance of the hematoma becomes obvious and the patients become weak and pale. This is actually not a hematoma. This is actually a puncture site bleed which occurs when the patient is on multiple anticoagulants or an and antiplatelets. And this is actually not a clear picture, but it's a hematoma uh, in one of our patients. So hematoma can be found out with the help of a ult ultrasound, du uh, du Doppler, uh, Doppler ultrasound, ultrasound or a normal ultrasound over the thigh region. And uh, pseudoaneurysm is a contained rupture with the disruption of all three layers of the arterial wall and occurs when the arterial puncture site does not adequately seal. And uh, there could be, uh, there will be a pulsatile blood which tracks in the perivascular space and is contained in the perivascular structures, which make them uh, take an appearance of a sac. And incidence is less than 2%. So femoral pseudoaneurysm, uh, this is the, uh, uh, we can see the sac is there and there is an abnormal, uh, there is a connection from the sac to the vessel. This was the patient who had this uh, pseudoaneurysm. So after uh, the treatment, that is, uh, uh, guiding, uh, giving com uh, ultrasound guided compression, the patient's pseudoaneurysm uh, with the hematoma had subsided, but it leads, it had led to a necrosis of the superficial region. This is after about uh, one month of uh, after giving the compression. So factors associated with formation of pseudoaneurysms are anticoagulant coagulant and antiplatelet agents being used. Large size of the sheath, more than eight, always uh, likely to have a it's always more likely to have a pseudoaneurysm formation, increased age, obesity, uh, and other factors which we had uh, told earlier. And diagnosis, always the patient will be having pain and swelling in the puncture site. And swelling from large aneurysm may also lead to compression of the nerves, especially the femoral nerve, and venous thrombosis, claudication, and rarely critical limb ischemia. Local ischemia of skin may lead to necrosis and infection. So as we have seen in the previous patient. And on examination, there may be a palpable pulsatile mass or a presence of a brewy over this aneurysm. However, there may not be any findings in such patients. 
if but we have to have a high index of suspicion that we can make out based on the disproportionate pain after the uh, after the procedure than we we have expected then the patient should undergo a doppler so that we can find out a pseudo aneurysm prior to its uh, uh, complications and imaging as uh, ultrasound we had seen that ultrasound it's sensitive uh, and specific and sac appears uh, a sac that expands and contracts with con uh, cardiac contraction will be seen and then color doppler there will be a swirling pattern with turbulence in the chamber uh, chambers basically, basically the, there may be one or more chambers in the uh, this uh, pseudo aneurysm sac and a tract which connects the chamber to the feeding vessel so this is the uh, superficial aneurysm cham chamber if you see here uh, deep chambers are there and there we can see the pseudo aneurysm tract connecting to the common femoral artery in this doppler ultrasound image and this is the uh, reconstructed image of the same aneurysm so treatment until 1990s only treatment was to go for a surgery if the patient developed pseudo aneurysm leading to complications uh, but later we have this ultrasound guided compression thrombin injection over the site femstop compression devices coil insertion fibrin and other sieves or a balloon occlusion have been used with variable success so basically we can divide this ultrasound guided thrombin injection which is, which could be tried and para aneurysmal saline injection that is at the neck of the aneurysm we inject saline so that the neck is occluded and there is a flow reversal and the flow gets obstructed into the aneurysm and the into luminal management this is thrombin injection uh, 1 ml or 2 ml thrombin is available uh, commercially and uh, this is the injection of the uh, saline over the neck para aneurysmal saline injection and endoluminal management serves to exclude the pseudo aneurysm from the circulation just kind of a kind like a flow diversion and depends on the side of uh, size of the pseudo aneurysmal neck and the ex expendability of the donor artery uh, so the in femoral artery it's definitely it is not expendable uh, we need the artery the two broad categories are there embolization and stent placement the width of the neck relative to the diameter of the donor artery is the determining factor so if the larger width is there or the larger neck is there then better to go for a stent placement rather than embolization and coil closure if the neck is narrow coil which are thrombogenic that is made of either stainless steel or uh, uh, platinum polyester fibers are incorporated into the coils to increase its thrombogenicity so that the thrombus is formed and the uh, aneurysm gets cut off from the uh, normal uh, the circulation main circulation disadvantages these methods uh, coil closure especially have a potential for recanalization so covered stents especially in large artery large neck are preferred and contraindication would be a mycotic aneurysm so this is a coil placement in a pseudo aneurysm patient uh, and this is actually a covered stent placement the initial picture shows the pseudo aneurysm then stent was placed and the post procedure uh, the it has resolved the pseudo aneurysm has resolved and also the, there is a method there were uh, especially this is um, uh, with the help of a transradial sheath we insert a oven for wire and uh, just uh, in the twitch uh, we use a eight french angio seal so that the collagen is plugged just like after the uh, femoral artery puncture when we close uh, with an angio seal similarly the here the point of closure is at the neck of the pseudo aneurysm rather than the puncture site so indications for surgical repair so we preferably go for uh ultrasound guided guided compression and other methods like pseudo thrombin saline etc uh, or endoluminal management but when should we go for surgical repair uh, is when we have a infected pseudo aneurysm there is rapid expansion failure of other therapies we have used skin necrosis patient going for severe compressive syndromes especially the critical limb ischemia so more complex procedures and more potent anti thrombotic therapy have led to the occurrence of most free, more frequent aneurysm formation so we have to be careful in patients use already using that and most important strategy strategies to pre prevent formation are assure a proper needle placement in the proper location uh, and uh, appropriate groin compression after the sheath removal so this will prevent 
uh, pseudo aneurysm formation also we can go for a angioseal closure in such patients whom we are using a large sheet and uh, patient has had a complicated procedure Uh, retroperitoneal hematoma is a classical complication of a high puncture or a cranial uh, high stick puncture high stick injury so it is to a tune of 0.2% very less and high uh, it is due to also could occur due to inadvertent puncture of the posterior wall of the femoral or a iliac artery and uh, it it's all definitely exacerbated by antiplatelet and anticoagulant use and it can also occur when the patient uh, when we try to remove a catheter without a wire when we remove the in the uh, during the end of the procedure uh, when we remove the catheter without a wire uh, then there is a chance of retroperitoneal hematoma clinical features of hematoma retroperitoneal hematoma is a high index of suspicion there will be very subtle clinical signs of hemorrhage there will be back pain lower abdominal or groin discomfort along with swelling pallor sweating so there will be relative hypotension and mild tachycardia that transiently so when the patient goes for hypotension and mild tachycardia we try to give administer fluids and the patient improves but still the patient again uh, comes out with uh, same features like hypotension and uh, tachycardia uh, then we have to suspect that it could be a retroperitoneal hematoma and, uh, and retroperitoneal hematoma near or within the iliopsoas muscle presents as femoral neuropathy and uh, starts as the pain in the groin and uh, or, and also can lead to leg weakness sudden onset of severe pain in the affected groin and hip can also occur because there is uh, increased hematoma in the iliopsoas region there is spasm of the iliopsoas muscles resulting in flexion and external rotation of hip and any attempt to extend the hip will result in severe pain in such patients diagnosis fall in hemoglobin Uh, and Im- imaging we can uh, imaging will also help especially ultrasound abdomen and pelvis, pelvis but because we need to press the probe and need to extend hyper uh, rotate externally rotate the uh, leg to see, get a proper ultrasound image the pa- the the patient will have severe discomfort and the, this is actually limited this ultrasound examination has uh, is limited by the patient discomfort so we can go for ct scan M- mri is needed if there is nerve root compression and angiography uh, in in hemodynamically unstable patients to view for selective embolization or placement of a stent graft if indicated management always fluid resuscitation blood transfusion normalization of the coagulation factors no specific guidelines to suggest whether to intervene with an endovascular or open surgery to stop the bleeding if the patient is hemodynamically stable with no evidence of ongoing bleeding conservative management is recommended selective intraarterial embolization or stent grafts can be also tried if the patient is stable open surgery uh, if the patient is unstable there is a failed stent and the patient has severe compartment syndrome of the abdomen then comes the av fistula so as we know there is abnormal connection between the artery and the vein over the femoral region and uh, it, the risk factors holds true uh, same same uh, holds for this uh, av fistula also that is in, in normal vascular complications especially female patient on anticoagulation obesity patient having hypertension and here multiple punctures and low punctures adds to the insult and also there uh, in elderly it is more likely Uh, to have uh, this av fistula so low groin puncture is notorious to cause av fistula likely to uh, access a superficial femoral artery just distal to the uh, cfa bifurcation and we know that this profunda femoris vein pa- passes between the sfa and the femor- profunda femoris uh, artery and causes uh, av fistula formation and punctures proximal to sfa that is superficial femoral artery are particularly vi- vulnerable to cause av avf that is uh, fistula because the needle tip frequently punctures the underlying profunda vein so that is also one of the reasons why there is uh, increased chance of av fistula in case of a low stick puncture and sheath placement uh, if the there is a large sheath being placed then the greater risk of av fistula uh, because the dilatation of the tract between an artery and vein reduces that once the fistula is formed it usually naturally closes by itself but if you if there is a large dilatation of the tract then the chance or likelihood of this communication closing decreases and this increases with the larger size of the sheath 
incidence is less than 1%. The uh, significance of AV fistula is that it will be initially silent. Maybe after one to two months or three months only, the patient will uh, develop uh, an abnormal sensation in the groin, develop fatigue, new onset of worsen, lower limb ischemia, etc. And uh, on examination, we may make out only during a palpation and auscultation of the affected vessel with the help of a machinery like murmur, brewery, and pulsatile mass. Patient may have lower extremity edema. The consequences are DVT, nerve compression, new onset or worsened varicose vein. Most significant problem is as in any case of any fistula, like a high flow fistula, uh, the, in a fistula, the patient developing high output cardiac failure. So diagnosis, best diagnosis uh, or the diagnosis of choice, uh, diagnostic procedure of choice would be a Doppler ultrasound, where this uh, we can find out a high frequency, low resistance flow and it will be seen as a mosaic color pattern as we see here. Often the specific artery and vein involved can be clearly identified in between this mosaic color pattern we find. CT angio also picks up the uh, defect, but ultrasound is more than enough. And conventional angio, we see a blush with rapid filling of the adjacent vein. And treatment, usually small ones are asymptomatic and thrombosed by itself, and thus needs to only to be observed. What are the indications where we have to go for uh, procedure, uh, corrective procedures? That is clinical symptoms related to AVF sets in, like uh, steel syndrome causing claudic claudication or distal ischemia, significant edema or venous insufficiency due, no, due to venous hypertension, the pressure is transferred from artery to vein, and heart failure due to high flow fistula, and progressive enlargement even under, under ultrasound surveillance. And in it, iatrogenic AVFs that do not seal spontaneously needs to be treated uh, uh, either by ultrasound guided compression, which is painful in case of an AV fistula. And it is not useful if the fistula is more than two to three weeks, where we call it as a chronic AVF. And the patient, if it's already on ongoing anticoagulation, also decreases the chances of ultrasound guided compression. So we have to go for a covered stent placement or embolization techniques in case of uh, such cases where ultra UGC or ultrasound guided compression fails. If endovascular repair also fails, we can go for a surgery. So this is a, uh, summarizing the findings in case of how uh, of hematoma, pseudoaneurysm, and AV fistula. If we don't have a pulsatile mass, bulging pulsatile mass, um, and there is no tenderness, but there is a brewy. It could be AV fistula over the femoral puncture side. Hematoma is evident because there will be bulging mass, pulsatile waves could be there, but no brewery, but tenderness will be significantly present. And pseudoneurism all would be present, including brewing. Then comes dissection. So in femoral artery, due to a puncture, the dissection occurring could be a retrograde dissection. It will be a needle or a guide wire entering the dissection plane at the time of the femoral artery cannulation or during femoral angiography if the sheath is up against the wall of the femoral artery. So most of the dissections are discovered on femoral angiography and are usually asymptomatic. The dissection flap is held open by the anterograde flow. Uh, sir always says that uh, in case of a dissection happening in a vessel below the level of the arch, then we needn't worry much because it is uh, closed, it is uh, kept out, the artery is kept patent by the direction of the flow. But we have to get worried if the dissection occurs above the level of the arch, the vessels in the vessels above the arch. And rarely results in, uh, this uh, dissection of the femoral artery rarely results in complete occlusion of the femoral artery. And uh, diagnosis, uh, uh, dissections resulting in femoral artery occlusion will result in all the symptoms of arterial insufficiency due to a occlusion occurring in the patient. However, when dissection is discovered on angiography, it may be prudent to withdraw the sheet back, repeat the femoral angiography using hand injection of the contrast to ensure that it has not closed and will not get occluded upon sheet removal. In patients with femoral artery occlusion, always go for contralateral uh, access with attempted percutaneous or surgical approaches for, to femoral artery recanalization. So acute limb ischemia is the one we should be worried. Even though we say it's in, asymptomatic, we have to look for all the factors, the five Ps to check for this. And if it occurs, it is a surgical emergency. So as discussed, uh, arterial occlusion is, to, is a worry. It could occur uh, more uh, or due to a large thrombus at the puncture site and a large catheter 
uh, being used in patients with multiple comorbidities. So this is a thrombus in uh, one of my patients uh, eight months back. Uh, so this could occur. The patient had uh, thrombophilia workup positive, and uh, and uh, incidence was less than is less than one percentage, and uh, due to uh, the case of occlusion and Doppler studies and peripheral angiogram will be diagnostic. A small ones, spontaneous lysis occurs. Large ones, we have to have a thrombectomy and remove, suck, suck out the clot which has formed. Infections, occurrence is less than 1%. Clinical features is pain, erythema, swelling at the puncture site, purulent discharge and fever. This is a patient who had a, a infection. We can see the redness and the, there will be rubber, calor, dollar, tumor, etc. That is the classical features of infection or inflammation. And causes due to improper shaving and scrubbing. And we have to be careful regarding the sepsis within the cath lab. And uh, treatment is always antibiotics. And femoral neuropathy is the uh, result of the compression of the complications. It could be either hematoma, pseudoaneurysm, or even AV fistula. So incidence is less than 0.3 percentage. It is due to the femoral nerve compression uh, or by a hematoma. And clinical features will be tingling and numbness and weakness. Usually it is self-limiting. So complications during the procedure, that is while uh, during the vasovagal reaction, which can occur during the uh, while giving the uh, compression post-procedure or spasm could occur or perforation or dissection. Post-procedure occlusion, that is after some time, occlusion, compartment syndrome and pseudoneurism could occur. Vasovagal reactions are due to pain, anxiety uh, and prevention is Pre-procedural sedation, analgesia, adequate local infiltration of anesthesia decreases the pain, anxiety, and associated vagal output. Uh, and uh, we know we say that we need to give sig uh, significant dose, uh, adequate local infiltration. But we, uh, we know that if the local infiltration of anesthetic agent is more than a particular level, it can cause systemic absorption also. And uh, so we have to be careful. If increased, uh, in, increased systemic absorption of lignocaine occurs, it can even cause heart blocks. Uh, but usually we give only 5 to 10 uh, ml, maximum 5 ml. And uh, pain induced by radial artery puncture is not, that, that is uh, this use of lidocaine prilocaine patch, which is in vogue in some places. But uh, studies have shown that in case of radial, radial artery puncture, this has not been of much use. So femoral artery region that is above the uh, femoral triangle being much thicker, uh, how useful it be, we have to study. And spasm uh, could be induced by the a foreign body coming into the arterial vessel. It will usually go in for spasm like a sheath or a catheter. So it is due to the uh, prominent medial layer that is largely dominated by alpha-1 receptors, which results in catecholamine release and causes the spasm. And uh, it is aggravated by uh, multiple guide wire passage, multiple catheter exchanges and prolonged complicated procedure on a small, art small artery in a younger age patient who is anxious. So prevention, the cocktail we say is NTG, uh, 100 to 200 microgram, 2.5 uh, milligram verapamil and 40 units per kilogram heparin maximum of to a ton of, uh, tune of 5,000 units. And uh, use of hydrophilic catheters, smaller sheets help to prevent spasm. And single puncture and single sheet placement will also prevent the spasm to occur. And treatment, additional doses can be given, more analgesia and sedation and warm compress. So what is it, why do we favor or do not favor, which are the conditions why we do not favor femoral and uh, or radial approach? So conditions where uh, radial access should be preferred is when there is an absent femoral pulse, femoral brui, femoral arterial bypass graft, extensive inguinal scar. It's all we have discussed in the first slide. Then conditions where radial access should be avoided is when the radial artery is being considered for a CABG or a AV fistula correction and upper limb atherosclerosis occurs, extreme tortuosity of the vessel, small vessel, vessel, a small radial artery. There is a and if there is chance of Raynaud's or Burgers disease, then never use a radial approach. And if there is a need for a more than seven French or a larger sheath, then better to go for a femoral rather than a radial approach. And uh, in case, so how to 
attain hemostasis in case of complications. Uh, manual compressions we have discussed. We can go for mechanical compression, topical hemostatic aids, and vascular uh, closure devices, both active and passive. Manual compression is the gold standard uh, diagnostic procedure. We have to immediately give compression interventions. Usually we wait for four to six hours uh, uh, so that we remove the sheet after four to six hours looking at the ACT. And uh, site of compression is two centimeter proximal to the skin punctured site. And uh, duration, as we know, one French, five, mi five minutes. That is uh, three to four minutes or five minutes to, be, uh, to remember that. And disadvantages, ineffective compression, uh, due to fatigue. Uh, so, because we are manually compressing, the uh, we, we uh, the person going uh, who is doing compression may get fatigue, and uh, the pay, there will be inadequate compression leading to complications. Good hand position during compression is correct method will be to uh, fix your fingertips uh, directly in a vertical manner rather than uh, angled or a horizontal manner because that. Vertical compression will be less fatiguing when compared to the incorrect method. And fem stop devices are used. We, can, we have to ease the pressure after uh, gradually reduced to 30 millimeter of HC over two hours and then remove. And this is another one, the clamp piece, which we uh, usually don't use. And topical hemostatic aids like topical patches, pads, bandages, and powders are available to assist hemostasis with manual compression which accelerate the clotting process and thus accelerate the hemostasis. So these are the few of them. Vascular closure devices introduced in 1995 to decrease the vascular complication and reduce the time to hemostasis and ambulation. It is classified as passive and active. Passive, uh, passive ones are enhanced hemostasis with prothrombotic material or the mechanical compression, but do not achieve prom hemostasis or it, sh uh, it shortens the time of uh, time to ambulations. Active ones or uh, multiple ones are there, angio seal, per close, star close, and passive ones are as we have seen, femostor, femostat, uh, etc. We go for active ones, especially we use the collagen seal, uh, collagen plug uh, in case of an angio seal. And uh, this is how uh, angio seal uh, protects uh, or closes the puncture site. The success rate is 97 percentage in case of closure devices. One of the easy, easiest devices to learn and use has a very high initial success rate. The collagen plug in the tract also acts to reduce the oozing from the site and the retained components of the device are completely resolved. Um, there is a less uh, some chance of embola infection and embolization of the intravascular anchor. And uh, repeat access of the same vessel can be done only after 90 days because it is the time where this uh, material of this closure device gets absorbed by itself. And we cannot use the same site for repeat puncture. This is a star closed device. And uh, uh, this is a uh, video showing closure uh, uh, closure device placement that is angio seal placement so once we exchange the wire of the sheath sheath is removed after the sheath is removed we insert the angio seal device make sure it is in the into the artery you can make sure by getting the adequate back flow pulsatile flow once the pulsatile flow is achieved, we have to make sure that the pulsatile flow has achieved. After that, we remove the top end of the seal. And insert the collagen device which uh, puts a collagen seal inside the vessel, pull it, and then cut it, cut the rest of the part. And the uh, whole of the uh, device gets re resorbed, the, uh, the materials get resorbed in 90 days. So we have to give a pressure for at least 
two minutes, two to five minutes uh, over this, uh, at least two minutes, uh, so that the plug is formed and uh, well fit into the puncture site. And after that is done, we have to, we can remove the, uh, we can cut the rest of the part of the device. So and, uh, one a newer device is very uh, much more useful and uh, is uh, in use. This is the Optura device, uh, which is much better. So here we have the artery hemostatic tube. Here we needn't go for a backflow to look at the backflow from the uh, artery. There is a black indicator uh, within the um, Optura device, which helps to so show that the, it is in the device and uh, we, this is how the device is inserted. So this uh, was about the femoral artery complications and their uh, treatment. So we the, our prime aim is to reduce the complications during any procedure. So nowadays, uh, every CAT lab is uh, using the timeout me method of uh, use, uh, to reduce complications. Uh, so this is the one Patel, used in CAT lab years, where we... Uh, 52.6 kg, MDF Patel, 51 years. So here, the, we ask, uh, we tell, uh, the, there is a set uh, list checklist of the patient, uh, her comorbidities, her uh, vitals, and uh, the also the site of puncture. So what we need in a timeout checklist would be uh, the patient uh, name, age, et cetera, needs to be confirmed. That what is the assessment of the access site and marking? Is the patient positioned uh, properly? Any precautions to be taken? And the use of anticoagulants and antiplatelets? Because we have seen that all these complications are dependent on uh, most of them are dependent on anticoagulation, antiplatelet use, etc. This will make us aware during the procedure. So if, if the size is large, the patient is uh, large sheath is used, there is an anticoagulation use, we can go for a closure device so that the patient doesn't develop any complications. So that was uh, regarding uh, uh, femoral artery complications and uh, its treatment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zubair. I think you've covered everything very nicely. I would only add one more thing. You mentioned spasm. So sometimes the spasm can be troublesome. And uh, especially in children, you can see more spasm. So in children or even in some uh, adults, if we inject xylocaine again around the artery, the spasm, besides xylocaine or lignocaine, the spasm is relieved. So now that we are not reusing, I rarely see spasm. But in the days when I was reusing everything, spasm was not uncommon. We used to see it quite often. So as far as possible at that time, we used to inject uh, xylocaine when coming out. At the end of the procedure, again, just to make sure that there is no spasm. And I would say the other thing is, you mentioned thrombosis. So thrombosis, again, we used to see more often in children. And this was because we puncture both walls. We puncture the anterior wall, we puncture the posterior wall in children. We go beyond and then we come back into the lumen and then we get the backflow. So when we are doing that, then we get uh, sometimes thrombosis. Because again, in children, you have to compress for a much longer time than in adults. There is a lot of uh, subcutaneous fat, fatty tissue also in children. So, thrombosis is more common in children. And at least, uh, I remember one child where we had to not only do an arterectomy, we had to open the artery and we had to also use a Fogarty catheter to pull the thrombus out which had gone distally down the leg. It had progressively closed the artery. Eventually, of course, patient recovered very well. We've done subsequent embolizations also. But in children, beware of spasm and also of thrombosis. Any other comment or any other question? I think our time is up.